many of you have attended uh, some of my sessions before uh, with Godaddy only. And some of you might be listening to me for the fir very first time. All right. And uh, the session is getting recorded now. Thank you so much. We'll, we'll go ahead and get started. So uh, my name is Nick Bartha, guys. I'm, uh, like I said, I'm going to introduce myself first. I'm a digital marketing uh, evangelist, enthusiast, whatever you want to say. There's some sort of... Yeah, okay, now it's gone. I'm, I'm just going to uh, mute everyone so that this doesn't really come in. Okay, uh, I've been in this industry for the past uh, 20 years almost. I started way back in 1998. And in terms of... Uh, my roles, my, the kind of work which I do in this industry, I have my own digital marketing agency and I also run my own digital marketing training institute. And I, I do train at various other uh, organizations, corporates and so forth. If I talk about the training end, it's more than 5,000 professionals which I've trained so far. And if I talk about the servicing end, uh, more than 1,200 clients I have served so far, I've delivered them digital marketing training from various different domains, uh, whether it's to do with the search engine optimization services in the domain of search engine, uh, or maybe in the social media or the email marketing or mobile marketing or so forth. All right. Uh, these are some of the certifications, uh, which I have made myself eligible for, uh, which are from Google, Bing, HubSpot, YouTube, and so forth. I already mentioned the kind of experience I've got. And from the education point of view, I pursued a master's in business administration from University of Toronto. And I did mention that I have my own agency, right? So that's a full-time role, which I'm, uh, you know, most, most of the times busy with. I, my, my agency name is uh, YO Creations. It's based out of Toronto, Canada. All right. So we do deliver all the, all the digital marketing services, which I talked about. Uh, Besides this, I'm a speaker at various other colleges and universities, some of them being University of Toronto, the same university from which I passed out. Uh, then it's uh, IIM Ahmedabad, IIM Bangalore, IIT Kharagpur, and several others. All right, in case you wanna know more about me in detail, guys, you can anytime refer to my LinkedIn profile. So just go ahead and type in my name, which is Nick Bartla on LinkedIn. You can uh, send me a request or something if you wanna connect with me and you can check out my entire profile, what kind of uh, work I've done in the past and so forth. All right, and the last thing, like I already mentioned that uh, I do deliver trainings at several other places. Some other besides GoDaddy are, uh, like I'm a trainer with Go Google, I'm a trainer with Microsoft, with HSBC and several others. So that's my introduction guys. And uh, the next slide, I hope everybody can also see my screen. Uh, the very first slide talks about what exactly are we going to be covering in today, all right? And uh, uh, another thing which I want to uh, pinpoint or want to let you know uh, in the beginning that wherever, whenever you have any questions, feel free to put that across in the chat window. Make full use of the chat window by asking in your questions. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll try to have as much uh, interactivity as much possible. I'm just going to double check for the recording again whether the session is getting recorded or not, because there's... All right, uh, Gaurav, if you're around, you might have to uh, give me the host rights to get the recording started, because I see it's asking me to... If you're around, Gaurav, just, just pass on the host rights to me. The screen yeah. already shows yeah. it's recording, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's recording. Shows, but, uh, perfect, absolutely, yeah. It is showing recorded, but uh, it's getting recorded, but just wanted to make a double check thing. Perfect, so uh, we'll start with mobile advertising. We'll understand what exactly we mean by mobile advertising, the introduction, and then we we'll jump on to the measurement and how mobile and the other disciplines of digital really gel well with each other. All right, so there's gonna be uh, some sort of uh, I would say gyan in the beginning, and then we'll jump on to the exact things which one needs to do while driving in uh, mobile marketing campaigns and so forth, whether it's to do with the paid or the unpaid and so forth. All right, so now if we talk about mobile, yes, that's the, uh, uh, 
that's a device which is being used the most if we compare it with the bigger screens and so forth. Uh, consumers, when we say consumers, the the ones who are there under the internet, they experienced uh, uh, they're, they're experiencing good good stuff on the mobile from various different uh, players, and one cannot really miss out on that, right? They consumers are ex expecting a mobile, a good mobile experience from every single brand. So, uh, not even a single brand can actually, you know. Uh, really miss out on that. If they do that, they're going to lose out on uh, a lot of stuff. So uh, from various different companies, you know, a mobile program can mean many things. When we say many things, there, there are various things, various creative stuff which can be done over the mobile. If you talk about an online store, mobile presence is not just about having an e-commerce uh, store, but also it's about having an app and so forth. So there are two, two sides of this you know, having a mobile website and also having a mobile app. For a smaller business, uh, you know, mobile advertising marketing could really mean just having a website or maybe running an SMS loyalty program or something. So the definition of mobile marketing really differs from, the, uh, from, from business to business depending upon the scale and so forth, all right? So uh, another thing which I would like to say that regardless of the size, whether it's small, big or, what, or whichever industry, uh, your businesses, your customers are uh, always on a hunt for, you know, good experience on the mobile devices. They're, they're looking, they're expecting for that. So it's an opportunity to connect with them through this way. And uh, along with the other digital channels of mobile is being clubbed together, it always magnifies the efforts. It brings in much more push and it helps you achieve the goals which are set across in the beginning. All right, so now uh, in this introduction part, what we're gonna be looking at is the importance and then the uh, importance of mobile marketing and then in the digital landscape. And how do we really distinguish the advertising from the marketing part? All right, and then uh, in the end, we look at how mobile complements the other marketing channels. And then slowly and steadily, we'll move on to things like app store optimization. Probably that's something uh, which I've seen many people are interested in that uh, uh, if we have got an app, how do we really go ahead and optimize it for, for the app store, right? It's a bit different the way uh, we optimize our websites for search engines and so forth. So that's something which I've kept it for the second half, all right? In the first half, it's more of a uh, introduction part. And then in the second half, it's more of the execution thing which I'm going to be focusing on. All right, wherever you have any questions, guys, you can go ahead and uh, put that across in the chat window, like I said. Okay, so if you talk about mobile marketing association, how do they really define across mobile marketing as a practice? Uh, the mobile marketing uh, is being defined across as a set of practices by them, which enables the organization to communicate and engage in interactive and relevant manner through and with mobile devices and networks. So. Uh, it's, it's more about getting engagement, uh, getting connected with your customers and so forth. So that's the definition which I put in across in this slide, which has been given by Mobile Marketing Association. Now, what do we really mean by mobile marketing? Uh, there has been a lot of change if we talk about uh, 10 years back story or 15 years back or the way things were earlier in the digital space than what uh, they are actually right now, right? Uh, so uh, the channels have really gone, uh, the personal channels have really become different. And in order to reach out to your customers, you cannot miss out on the mobile. Mobile is the uh, next thing as we all know about it. So if you are not doing mobile marketing as a advertiser, as a business person, uh, you're being left behind, right? So what are, these, what are the things which really drives mobile marketing? Why should one uh, go ahead and look into that? It's more about increasing sales, getting more engagement and also building in loyalty. And that's what every sales and marketing professional, majorly the marketing professional looks for. Right. So now it's no more considered to be a luxury. It's more of a necessity as we all know about this. Uh, earlier, if we talk about, yes, uh, it was more of a luxury. Uh, very few people were really into mobile marketing, but it's, it's uh, something which you can't really live without, or your business can't live without. Now consumers, they uh, do expect to, uh, you know, uh, we have already spoken about it. They do expect some great experience over the mobile device. And if you're not delivering good experience, 
they might punish you. How are they going to punish you? They might not really come back to your side or to your, uh, you know, whatever, uh, maybe an app. If, if you do not have an app, uh, they might not find you over the internet. They might not search for you. They might not ask about you. They might forget about your brand and you, you're, gonna, uh, you're getting punished this way. Right? So if, if you're not doing it and your competitors are doing it, they'll always have an advantage over you because they're getting into, uh, connect, getting into uh, the mode of connecting with the end customers and also from the engagement point of view, they're engaging them and so forth. So if we talk about the difference between the two, the, the, uh, the advertising and the marketing, the mobile marketing and advertising, they are different. How exactly? Marketing is, in, in plain simple words, marketing is actually the path to engagement and mobile advertising is more about the branding mechanism or the path to awareness, letting people know about what you have come up with and so forth. We'll talk about both, how exactly this needs to be done, all right? Now, who needs mobile marketing? Every business that has customers or prospects that are spending good amount of time or at least a considerable amount of time on uh, mobile, on mobile, right? Uh, whether it's to do with uh, looking for information, whether the customers are using mobile to uh, get in information, seek in information, or to buy across products and so forth. Uh, there, most of the uh, organizations, they're, they're uh, there are exceptions. There are exceptions that some of the industries uh, do not have their customers over the mobile, but most of them, virtually all companies need mobile. All right. If you talk about the, the role of mobile, mobile marketing in marketing mix, it's a crucial part. We cannot, like I already mentioned, that it's a necessity. It's not a luxury. Now, it, it has a crucial role to play, and mobile makes dollars, your marketing dollars, your budget work harder and become more trackable. Now, the tracking part is also there, which is uh, becoming much more uh, fine and granular day by day. All right, now this is uh, just a snapshot of the, the uh, very few, uh, you know, initial ma mobile ads which came in. That was by Ford. That these were the, that was way back, I think it was two, uh, I don't know the year, but the, these were the initial years of mobile marketing. So that's just a pictorial representation of how this is, this is 2010. That's what is, they're presenting it over here. Uh, but that's, that was way back earlier. It is just a way to uh, ask or uh, make your customer go ahead and do some action. So showing in the banner ad and asking them to punch in the zip code so that they get the loan offer and something. So it's more of a local, local mobile marketing, which is being done by Ford over here, right? There, the customers are being prompted to enter the zip code so that they can get to know about the loan offers in their area. All right, there are certain stats which I've got presented over here in this slide. Uh, the role, when we are talking about the mobile's role in the marketing mix, 15.4% of people who took the first step, you know, took the second step exceeding the most expect, uh, expectation of one to three persons. That's the, the role of the mobile. It always leads to, like I already mentioned, it makes your marketing dollars work harder, right? So it always gels well with the other marketing, whether it's the traditional media or whether it's the uh, digital media of, of the other channel except the mobile. If you talk about... Uh, uh, the other advertising through television, print, uh, newspaper, print media, or websites, more users, uh, you know, access the web via mobiles than the desktop or other digital. And that's something uh, which is getting changed. Uh, the numbers of the numbers are getting changed in terms of the usage of mobile. Uh, the usage of websites over mobile, it's, it's increasing and people are not using much uh, laptops or desktops, the biggest screens for checking out stuff. Mobile, mobile activities increase uh, during the large television events. That's something which goes without saying. All right, also talking about the other uh, channels, there are more users, more users browse the web on mobile devices than desktops already mentioned. Google says, or this is from Google, Google says 50% of those who perform a local search on a smartphone visit that business within 24 hours. 
Why am I talking about all these things? Is just because that's really letting us know the importance of mobile. So we have just got started. We are just talking about the the uh, you know why is it important? What exactly it is and so forth, and some numbers which proves all that. On desktops, if we talk about 33% of those who perform a local search visit a business within 24 hours. So that's the impact which mobile marketing really makes. And mobile mobile searches are more local in nature. Action takes uh, place at a fast rate with this. Some key takeaways, key takeaways from what we have uh, just discussed so far. So everything and nothing has changed with mobile. It's the what remains the same, selling something. So the selling is there, but it's just that the how has become different and mobile efforts succeed by first identifying and then aligning with your business objectives and knowing your particular customer and prospects when it comes to mobile likes and desires is of utmost importance, right? And you cannot really go ahead and leave out mobile activities on an island and so forth. Spoken about it. Now just, now we're going to focus on the mobile advertising furthermore. Uh, so uh, here are a few liners which I put in across, and uh, this one says that most of the ongoing mobile marketing requires permission. Mobile advertising is an exception. You do not need a permission. You just need to go ahead and pinpoint where do you want to advertise and so forth. Mobile advertising is an opportunity to reach out to your customer where you feel they are. So that's more of targeting the way it works with the other form of digital advertising too. Right, so opportunity to reach out to your customers who are not necessarily your biggest and the most raving fans. Raving fans. So do use mobile advertising to grow your audience and make sure you convert them into long life followers, loyal customers and so forth. So we're gonna look into the mobile advertising. How do we define that? The various different ad types which are available on mobile devices. You must have experienced, must have seen while accessing different websites, different apps, when you are, uh, you know, while you're searching something or the other, the different kind of advertisements, that's something we're going to be talking about now. And then we're going to look at the traits of a successful mobile advertisement. And then we're going to look at the KPIs that define success of mobile advertising. All right. So it all started with SMS and so forth. We all know about it, right? And uh, then it has uh, really changed a lot with interactivity being there, uh, you know, the banner advertisements, interstitials, and so forth. Uh, if you talk about uh, the defining, uh, the definition of mobile advertising, it's more of the paid ads, right? Ads do prompt the mobile users to click onto a rich media experience like a landing page or a video, which you guys have already must have seen when you're there on different websites. Mobile advertising is not at all permission-based, but uh, should be relevant so that it's acted upon. Okay, so... Now talking about the impact, mobile advertising is gaining its importance and advertisers do account for small screens and fat fingers. Now, uh, all the technology if we talk about, whether it's due with the mobile apps or mobile websites, they are being, uh, you know, they're being created in such a manner that they look for all the various sizes of fingers also and the screen size. They take that into account so that uh, you know, the experience of the customer doesn't really uh, go bad and so forth. If you talk about Facebook, Facebook is also providing the viability of mobile advertising. They, every, every platform, every network, every ad network has got different set of websites for the mobile and different set of uh, websites where they can, where the advertisers can advertise for the desktops. All right. The measurement and the placement of ads is also possible and so forth. So one needs to place the ads as an advertiser or as an advertising agency, whosoever is doing the uh, advertising role, whosoever is taking care of that. They are responsible for placing the ads at the right place with the right content. Now here are the, uh, some of the different ad types. I haven't really taken the huge list and placed them over here. Because the, if, if you go to Google, uh, even Google AdWords also, you'll find the, uh, quite a many, the list is huge. I've just taken across, I've penned down the most common ones, and we, which you must have experienced and have seen it. Uh, the different ad, so banner ads, interstitials, which you get to see over the screen, and then the page takeovers. All right. 
and then you have got the text ads also so these text ads are specifically for the mobile search engine all right where the url is there and then the phone number is clickable which are the call only ads right we, we had a session earlier on the ppc stuff also where we have spoken about the call only ads how you can make them for mobile devices and also for the uh, web right the the desktops and the laptops then you got the idle screen ads when somebody is not performing anything the screen is idle uh, ad comes in so you get you get all as an advertiser all the opportunities to create uh, you know these different type of ads then you got we have spoken about the ads in the mobile search all right uh, where should you really go ahead and place all these ads as a marketer you have to have better understanding about your customer the demographics and the psychographics once you know all that that helps you as a marketer or an advertiser to punch them across in your advertising channel so you need to finalize on the target and you have to see what is the goal whether it's more of engagement or more of sales and so forth on the basis that the, the kind of ad and the kind of targeting you're going to be looking at that's way too much in detail you have to have a good understanding about the digital media and that in a lot of experimentation is also needed with every single uh you know instance you get to understand what what is working well for your audience and what is not working well for your audience what time of the day what time what day of the week is uh, is the most appropriate to advertise which channel is the most appropriate or which keyword is the more appropriate one and so forth so you you know you learn over the period of time by running advertisements uh, on and on it's it's more of an hit and trial and also learning over a passage of time so you need to have uh, good understanding of your customer and also the uh, how they are behaving on different channels that's what you do uh, not just on various different websites you also go ahead and get an opportunity to place your banner ads or other the interstitials on apps on games and so forth all right these are some more ad examples all right so this is a mobile device on seattle times you, you have this banner ad placement and then you got the other banner ads then it's the interstitial ad which is right up here which is taking over the entire screen all right now talking about uh the definition of a successful mobile ads how do we really make sure that our mobile ad becomes successful or what are the traits which are common in those ads which are successful all right uh the ads which are successful are 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 successful because of the time and the location precisely which is being selected so all these settings really makes a lot of difference also the message definitely yes the message which is being conveyed all right you have to have a better understanding like i already mentioned about every damn little thing about your customer the channels on which you're advertising and it's a continuous process you have to see how can you improve the current situation and which activities are getting uh, which activities are getting impacted by a mobile advertising all right from the brand awareness if you're looking at uh, uh, running an advertisement for brand awareness uh, objective that's the objective then you have to also again look at things like uh, how can you really compel the users how can you make them uh, initiate or take an action and so forth so we have spoken about the traits of a successful mobile ads and how do you really look at things for, how do you what do you really do when you're looking at achieving brand awareness talking about analyzing the mobile ad data some of the key performance indicators well, i believe most of you are already aware of these terms the cost per impression the cost per click now these are the uh, kpis which precisely are being used in the major advertising agencies and also in the corporates to determine the performance of a campaign or of the marketing uh, the digital marketing team and so forth so what is the cost per impression whether it's going up or down whether it's getting you know improved or not and so forth the cost per click cost per conversion cost per acquisition the number of click throughs the cost per install of the app and so forth right so that's about analyzing and ensure that your ads are not interrupting the people while playing games or watching videos because that can be something which can really uh, irritating for most of the people okay so make sure that you're not uh, really bugging them you're not uh, sort of pushing them for something which they do not want to create 
content for your ads which are more relevant to those games or the apps or the videos uh, where you're placing your ad, right? It should add value to that. The last thing is the measurement part over here. Okay, some more liners which I've got. So measurement is a crucial part, as we all know. There are plenty of valuable matrices available in mobile. And uh, we're gonna be looking at those key matrices now. So whether you're examining any SMS program or a search uh, campaign or an app, you have to look at the matrices which, uh, you know, which, you know, which you should track and how to spot the mobile specific problem spots. So you have to have certain you know, KPIs, which we have already mentioned, some of the uh, matrices and the KPIs, I mean, are, are common. Uh, the cost per install, the cost per action, these are the matrices, which becomes your KPIs also when your performance is being looked at. Now, what we're gonna be looking at is the importance of the measurement on mobile, even with the imperfect technologies and then we look at how do we correlate key matrices to track for a given mobile marketing service and then the limitations to the measurement of mobile. All right, so mobile measurement is imperfect as of now we'd say, but it's getting improved better, it's getting better day by day. Uh, measuring in mobile is possible, but it does have room for improvement like I already mentioned. So, but you cannot really wait for the scenario when it's gonna be perfect in full you have to still measure and look out for things, okay? Things like uh, open rates, the searches, the, uh, opens, uh, the open rate of your emails, of your messaging and so forth needs to be looked at and looked at over a period of time. Just to check if things are getting better, they're getting improved or not, all right? The impressions, how many impressions or how many clicks were being, uh, uh, you know, used before a conversion happened. So uh, all of these things uh, needs to be tracked across when we are looking at the performance of the mobile campaign. All right, so other, so we already mentioned, I've already spoken about that. What exactly can we track? The messaging, the emails, the uh, open rates, the search. You, uh, you, you can check for the performance of a specific keyword or for a specific device, click to call and so forth. And that's all there with these ad networks. They provide all those facilities or the analytics platform like uh, Google Analytics, Kiss Matrix, and so forth. There are a few things which we cannot measure perfectly like QR scanners or the accidental clicks. You know, sometimes people, they do not want to click onto your ad, but they, uh, it happens to. So you cannot really reduce that from your total click summary. That's something which is missing right now, right? So, uh, you have to really rely on uh, some great agencies or vendors, uh, you know, sometimes when you are hiring them. So uh, they probably might not give you the full report. So that's another uh, drawback, which sometimes happen, depending upon what model you're taking. If you have an in-house uh, team, that's absolutely okay. They might give you the full report, but if you have an agency or a vendor, different vendor, you, you might not get the full report or so forth. Different, right? So. Uh, so it's imperfect tracking on, of ad placements can also be the other one. The key takeaways, the measurement isn't perfect. We already mentioned that, but we cannot really afford to uh, uh, wait till the time it's gonna be perfect. We still have to measure. Some of the matrices are the open rates and the searches and so forth. All right, now here's the last thing before we move on to the app stuff and so forth. The mobile marketing and the other channels. The other channels, as you all know, the search, email marketing, or the paid marketing, the banner and so forth, right? So social search engine, email and so forth, they have a role to play uh, along in conjunction with mobile marketing. If they're being done together, it can have a better impact. So mobile marketing is uh, perhaps even more than other channels does not exist in a silo, right? It depends on the other channels for initial contact and it can then make the efforts of other channels. So it's more of an assisted channel, I would say. Sometimes it cannot be the initial one or sometimes, uh, I mean, in most of the cases I've seen, it's more of an assisted channel which comes into the play at a later stage in the mar entire marketing mix. Whenever you are looking at getting connected with your customer, you use the other channels of digital and the mobile marketing comes in later for giving the push and giving an extra add-on. But it's not, it cannot be a rule of thumb 
which you apply everywhere. You have to see in different situations how things are going to work and so forth. All right. Google depends on other channels for initial contact and it can then make efforts for of other channels to be more personal, more measurable and much more effective. So, so uh, why mobile is related to social, how mobile is now a core consideration in SEO and why analytics is essential for any mobile program, we'll look into that. So you know what, the kind of effort we make uh, on our mobile website in terms of optimizing the content or also having a great layout, I'm just giving an example, always have a positive impact on the entire optimization of the website, right? So it goes hand in hand. This is just one example. Again, if I are sending across an emailer, uh, emailer campaign, we do not need to just look at the respond, the, the look and feel of that emailer in a laptop or a desktop device. It has to look good in a tablet or a, a iPhone or an Android or a, any other sort of, uh, there, are, there are a lot of tools available through which we can check the responsiveness of a website, of a, of a landing page, of a uh, emailer campaign uh, on various different devices, right? Uh, whether it's mobile or a tablet or a, an, or a desktop laptop and so forth, right? So we need to use mobile to magnify the efforts of other digital channels and create a holistic mobile enabled uh, marketing program. So uh, what we're going to be looking at now is the inherent link between the mobile and social media. And we'll describe why giving a mobile friendly website is crucial for email and SEO success. That's what I was talking about right now. So it goes hand in hand, right? And then we're gonna identify how content differs on mobile from desktop devices. You must have seen, uh, if, if, I mean, you have to really be uh, vigilant and you have to uh, see it very carefully. Some of the websites, uh, some of the great brands basically, you know, uh, put different content on their, uh, desktop and a mobile website. Most of the smaller players go with the same content with same, uh, everything same on the, both the websites. They don't want to put an extra effort, but uh, the bigger players, they make a lot of research. They put in a lot of effort and they have put different teams for both the different websites. When I say both the different websites, as in the mobile website and the desktop version, uh, it's just because they know that whenever people are on the go, and they're looking at content on their mobile devices, which is a smaller screen, they tend to offer them uh, lesser content because uh, they are already aware that uh, the, the consumer is not gonna consume so much of content in a hush hush situation on a smaller screen. And it's more of pictorial, it's more of uh, uh, videos, graphics, and infographics basically, which are being preferred more on a mobile device uh, related content. But when it comes down to the desktop version, the bigger screen, uh, the larger piece of content, the content as in the text content, I mean to say, is being offered depending upon uh, what's the nature of, what's, what, what kind of business are we talking about and so forth, right? And then we're gonna be looking at the importance of analytics and mobile marketing. Any questions, any, uh, any questions guys you got, please feel free to make, uh, put that across in the chat window. Talking about the mobile and social media, they go both hand in hand. This happens with most of us that we use our, uh, as, a, as a consumer, if I talk about our social media channels, more on the mobile devices rather than on the bigger screens. It happens, it, it's getting changed. So there's the undeniable link between the two. Social networking is more of a lifestyle activity. People do spend much more time on mobile devices using these rather than the bigger one. And mobile apps, mobile devices act as a mega phones on social media. There is an ability to create a negative as well as a positive stir in the masses. And it helps in engaging with people and building loyalty at a higher level through this. If we talk about the content, uh, mobile is much of a more, um, much of a personal channel, you're reaching out to people on their personal devices, right? You can avoid sending irrelevant uh, content and short retention spans are there on the, so I've already spoken about that. So one has to really keep an eye while creating content for these small devices, these smaller screens basically, right? 
So the consumption on devices often happens at home for the bigger screens. So you have to emphasize on what type of device and the location. All right. So more planning versus buying occurred. Consumption on of, of devices offer happens. We have already spoken about that. So you got to also see the storytelling across different devices also happens. Most of the times you might have seen whatever you are. Uh, okay, I'm giving another example. The remarketing. Uh, most of you must be knowing about this. If you visit some product today, let's see, let's say on Amazon, and then you get to see that same product which you have seen on Amazon everywhere. It's it's a Everywhere, I mean to say, the other different websites which you're visiting, you get to see the advertisement of that. It's like, you know, leaving the cookies. I cannot talk about that in detail, but some of you might be already knowing about it. Whatever product you are seeing right now, you want to buy, uh, let's say you, for some reason, you haven't bought it and you close that website, you have closed Amazon. Now you're going on to different websites. Let's say you went on to Make My Trip or you went on to Go I Vivo and you're seeing that same product, uh, which was there on Amazon. Uh, on to make my trips web, uh, you know, web page. So you feel like, I mean, you're being tracked, you are being offered the same thing. It's remarketing. So earlier, if I talk about earlier, as in like three years back, this was just possible. Remarketing was just possible on one single uh, device on, on one single, uh, you know, like as in the desktop version, it was not cross channel, but now Google actually uh, gives that ability to do the remarketing uh, over the different different devices, different screens. So if I've seen something on Amazon over my mobile phone, I might get to see that product as a, a you know being remarketed to me when I'm there on my MacBook machine. So that's also so the integration has happened, which is really leading to much better responses, much better uh, you know uh, responses and also performance of your marketing campaigns right through the collaboration of all the devices together. Talking about the conjunction between the correlation between the mobile and email, as we all know, the check, the email usage is much more over the mobile. It's the report says that uh, nearly 50% of the emails are opened on mobile devices, rather it's more than that. And one has to make sure that the emailers, the email designs are uh, being responsive. They look good on all the devices, right? So if we talk about certain specific industries, financial services, hospitality industry, they do, it, they do use email to move ahead of their competitors. Um, these are just a couple of them, but it's, it goes for every industry today, if I'll say. Talking about SEO, which is search engine optimization, making sure your website is on the top uh, in the search results, right? Uh, we all do that as marketers. Most of you are already aware of that. We are not just uh, as marketers have to concentrate on optimizing our desktop website. We also have to make sure that it goes on. The optimization goes on for our mobile website also. All right. Searches from mobile tend to have local intent. The best practices uh, needs to be followed. So uh, whether it's to with the on page optimization off page optimization. So SEO is pretty uh, vast in its nature. There's a lot of stuff which one needs to do uh, on page, off page, like I already mentioned, these are the two pillars of search and then optimization where you go ahead and do a lot of content creation for your website, where you go ahead and put a lot of emphasis on the various different tags. Some of the tags which I can talk about uh, are title tag, meta tags, meta tag, uh, and all tags and header tags and so forth. I don't want to sound technical over here, but it's just that I'm, uh, Push, uh, I'm, I'm talking about very few, very few stuff over here in terms of SEO. But it, it is like uh, quite a lot of stuff over there in, in the SEO space. And then if you talk about off page, it's all about linking, getting connected with various different websites. So whatever you do for your desktop website, you similarly need to do it for your mobile website. If you have a different mobile, you know, different version of your website and so forth. So your promotion of your business through mobile is not just going to be through uh, the paid part, but it also has to be from the optimization of your mobile mobile website. Also, it's about having a mobile app and optimizing the mobile app also. Now, this is another topic which I already mentioned. 
So uh, you know, we'll go for a break in some time. And after the break, I'm going to talk about the App Store optimization in detail. All right. The App Store, once you have an app, how do you go about optimizing it for apps? How is it different from the other different uh, SEO? All right, the case is between Facebook advertisements and Google AdWords, which one gives a better ROI? Also, how important is uh, AMP for SEO now? See, accelerated mobile pages, AMP, to answer your second question, uh, the second liner, AMP is absolutely important. That's the AMP. You cannot really go ahead and uh, uh, avoid that. You have to have the AMPs, the accelerated mobile page. And then, you, uh, then the uh, other question which you're talking about, the difference between the Facebook ads and the Google ads, from the ROI perspective, my experience has been better with Google Ads in most of the scenarios. Why is that? Uh, ROI usually uh, are being ROI is usually being calculated perfectly and precisely when you are when you've got the numbers. You know your goal and objective is to drive sales. When it comes down it comes down to uh, you know the other objective, which is uh, brand awareness or making people aware and so forth, or making people aware of building the brand. Uh, uh, loyalty or the brand positioning up and so forth. That's very difficult to measure. So from the brand awareness purpose, uh, uplifting the brand's uh, positioning, equity and so forth, Facebook works good, I would say. That's more of a pictorial stuff. And since uh, you cannot really measure that in numbers precisely, it's very hard to do that. Only bigger agencies are able to do it. So uh, from the ROI perspective, uh, I won't say Facebook is uh, is on the second level. Google advertisements, Google ads, AdWords, where you go ahead and use the search ads, the search text ads, uh, they play a better role. So within Google AdWords, the search text ads have been, has been and have uh, really done well when it comes down to boosting the sales. So that's what the answer is there for both of your questions. Let me know uh, if that helps or you have a follow-up question, Anikesh. So I've answered this, uh, the AMP part and also the Facebook and the Google. All right, perfect. So uh, we've spoken about the mobile and SEO. So content in the apps are, are not being looked by the search engines. We, like I already mentioned, we'll look into this part in detail later on. Mobile device, uh, SEO marketers, you know, should check where do I put content and how it is engaging to play and so forth. So this is a different ball game altogether the kind of content you have to produce for your apps and where do you have to place it and how do you have to optimize across. Talking about the PPC, which is the pay-per-click ads, basically, uh, it's done through the mobile. We have already spoken about those banner ads and so forth. They, are also, they also run on the PPC part, right? We have spoken about the search text ads. Uh, you have to see uh, when the clicks are happening, on which channel the clicks are happening, which keywords are really resulting into better clicks, better conversion, and so forth. Whether it's a, a headline with a lesser number of words or with uh, much more, which is being allowed and so forth, which works the well. All these things need to be looked at. Talking about the analytics, uh, Google Analytics do have different uh, platform for the app analytics. So you have you can go ahead and uh, get your app also connected to mobile uh, to, to web analytics, or you can have a mobile website being connected to web analytics, which is, I would talk about Google Analytics only in this case, which is the most renowned analytics platform. You can use any of those and get all of those uh, matrices which you usually get. All of those, some of them being like, how many visitors you received on your mobile website or your app, how much time did they spend? Where did they really came in from? And so you can just uh, see uh, the, uh, the common behaviors of those people who have converted. You know, when you are looking at the behavior of those people who have converted on your website, you find out uh, what's working and what's not working. Things which are working, you have to replicate that and things which are not working at all, people who are not converting on your website, they also might have something in common. You have to observe that, check that, and get that eradicated from your campaign. So all those things needs to be looked at. Okay, Sandeep says, if you integrate AMP, I will boost uh, page speed. Absolutely, it does boost across the page speed. AMP's, uh, so as the name says, accelerated mobile pages. So uh, 
definitely it, it is much better uh, way to put it across in deep thanks so much so i just answer that it is needed it is much more important yes but what exactly it really leads to is better page speed so the customer the consumer the, the person who's coming onto the web page through the mobile doesn't have to wait for long doesn't have to wait for long for the web page to come up even if he or she is on a 2g network which happens very much there on in india i mean now 3g is coming much more uh, common but still uh, amp has a great role to play not just from the consumer's point of view but also from the search engine bot the bot the search engine crawler basically who gives in certain credentials certain points to your website during the optimization process uh, when it looks at the speed a website which has a, a better loading speed uh, it gets much more push in the you know in the positions in the search ranking positions thanks thanks for jumping in uh, sandeep and sharing in uh, your inputs also talking about analytics from the sms now sms i won't talk about much that's more traditional form of uh, mobile marketing okay now the other thing is uh, i'm going to talk about is marketing plan it's almost 12:50 uh we can take a short 10 minutes break or something and uh, then come back again will that be okay and then we're going to talk about the marketing plan and then we'll have again a, a small break with, followed by the app uh, store optimization right makes sense so how about if we connect at 1:00 uh, o'clock it's 12:50 make sense guys i'm just going to all right perfect so okay i'm i'm going to be on mute now uh, let's have just a 10 minutes break and then we'll meet after 10 minutes perfect
All right, so let's get started off the break, guys. Uh, so now we're going to be talking about, I just want to check if you are able to hear me. All right, uh, perfect. So talking about the marketing plan for the apps, perfect. So when we talk about apps, as in the, uh, we're not going to get into the overall development of mobile apps because that's a different process altogether. It's more, more from the uh, designing development side, okay? But there are certain, uh, you know, websites which you can search for on Google, uh, which, you, which you can hop upon to create a mobile app for a lesser price. You know, it's like a SaaS model software as a service where you pay across every month a certain amount to get across a small, smaller app. If, you have, if you're a smaller business, you do not need to necessarily... Uh, invest into a larger price or uh, you have, don't have to really invest across in paying across a agency or maybe a web or a app developer. The best thing to do is to pay a nominal amount like $10, $20 or something per month and uh, get your mobile web, get your mobile website or your desktop website converted into mobile app. That's the best way to do it. Okay. So I'm saying it again, we're not getting into the designing and the development side. It's more of a marketing session. So I'm focusing more on the marketing for the app. Okay. So let's move ahead. Talking about the objectives, the brand objectives for, for promoting across a mobile app. It could be quite a many. Uh, it could be either to add value to the entire experience of the, uh, what do you say, customer, right? For product enhancement, giving across extra value add-on features. You must have seen with various telecom providers, they have got their apps like My Airtel app, Vodafone has got their app just so that you can pay your bills, you can check uh, what is the plan which is there on your, uh, you know, postpaid, prepaid connection on your broadband connection, you can change it, you can ask for any sort of help. Uh, the other objective from your apps could be to provide across just support where you are helping the customer and uh, for their grievances, for their day-to-day -day queries. The other objective could be to provide across entertainment, depends upon what business you are, for acquiring in new customers. Now again, uh, business to business, this varies uh, for brand awareness purpose, for engagement, for uh, in-app purchases too. Most of the e-commerce websites, if we talk about, like Amazon has their own uh, you know, app where they expect just the in-app purchases. Definitely the other objectives are there, but at the end of the day, it's... Uh, the purchases which they are looking for, right? For generating revenue. Also, the other model could be as a publisher or as an app developer, you can go ahead and make revenue by allowing other advertisers to place their ads on your app. I hope you guys are aware of the AdSense stuff, which plays across on the web version. So the way AdSense is there, which is being offered by Google, Google also offers a different platform, which is called AdMob. Okay, Google has got a different product, which is called AdMob, which is exactly similar to what AdSense is, guys. If you guys are having any questions about this, you can surely go ahead and put that across in the chat window. So AdSense is very similar to what AdMob is. Here you can create across app for any uh, stuff which you feel is gonna acquire a lot of traffic, a lot of visitors, maybe a gaming app or something is a perfect example for it or an entertainment or a content site. Most of the, uh, what do you say, the news website, the news uh, apps are there for, for the news channels and so for the news network. They, they go in and do this stuff, or whether it's on their website or whether it's on their app, they are looking always to generate revenue from the different advertisements which comes onto it, all right? So this is about the app brand object, the overall objectives. Now we're gonna go further. Okay, this slide also uh, delves deeper into what could be the brand awareness. These are different stages, whether it's to uh, offer fun entertainment or to offer ease of functionality. Uh, this has to be, you know, so you can uh, create more awareness by providing across uh, even the uh, functionality for the people who are accessing your app to share share the app, right? So this leads to much more brand awareness. 
running across contest, asking, uh, giving across rewards for sharing across your apps, uh, providing deeper content, and providing also various touch points for the brand at a deeper level. In, all right. Rajesh says, is there a product on AdSense AdMob which provides an outcome-based pricing model? Uh, see, to be very honest, Rajesh, I'm uh, not sure about any uh, specific pinpoint product within the ad mob that provides a outcome-based pricing model. Because what I uh, so I, I do also uh, you know generate revenue from some of my websites uh, through AdSense. Uh, what I get across is a report uh, in relation to the relo uh, reports, which showcases how many views were you know my website got how many clicks the i have received and how much revenue has been generated revenue per impression all of these stats are being offered to me this is what i really look at there is no in uh, there's no other product within these which i have come across to be very honest from from my knowledge from my uh, you know as far as i am aware about there is no such and uh, Sanjeevi says, can we get a complete report from AdWop? Yes, absolutely. The way you get across report from uh, AdSense, the way you get from there, you get a complete report from AdMob too, Sanjeevi, in regards to, uh, you know, who were the various different, uh, how many uh, clicks were, was there, were there, and so forth on your apps, and how much revenue have you generated. But you do not get a report in terms of which were those, uh, advertisers who have advertised onto it. So I'm not sure what is the definition of complete report which you're looking at. What is that thing which you're looking at in the report from AdMob? So uh, maybe if you're looking at the names of the advertisers uh, in detail, uh, that's something which I haven't seen. That isn't there. So that's missing. That's, that's not there. But you do get across the other various different matrices in terms of how much revenue got generated on what particular day, and what is the total? Okay, your time so in terms of location time, how many clicks? Absolutely, you get that. The clicks and so forth, and what and at what time? Sure, you do get that. So on a broader perspective, you do get that, but it won't tell you the click from this particular one or from that particular one. That is not possible. So the minute little uh, details are not there, but, but from a broader perspective, in GBS, it's there. All right. Perfect. So that's about, uh, this slide was about how the mobile app can grow. My pleasure, Sanjeevi, and my pleasure, Rajesh. Anyone else with other questions, do feel free to put that across in the chat window, guys. So beyond the conversion, if we talk about, I mean, uh, what, what exactly, what are the different roles of mobile marketing? I'm, you know, I'm talking about that same thing again. It can be about, uh, you know, the downloads we are looking at, we're looking at building loyal customers through in-app purchases or looking at more account creations, in-app referrals, optimizing the advertising spend. So see, these are, this is the exhaustive list of the same thing which I just spoke about a while back. Sandeep says, can you give idea of Facebook inter, uh, instant article? Okay, the instant article uh, is that news, is the piece where you can go ahead and put in across uh, content in there. I haven't used it. Is this is uh, in, instant article? Let me just see. Give me a second. All right, so, so this is more of a, what do you say, a promotion on the news feed. That's what I can, so you, you get that while you're creating across a Facebook ad only. I haven't uh, tried using it, to be very honest in the, I haven't tried promoting across an instant article uh, over Facebook, but it looks very similar to the way we have other different advertisements, which we can create off our landing page. It's just that the content is there within Facebook platform only. Okay, so this is how Fox News is doing it right now. On, on This is on Facebook and going on to Fox News. Right, so this is very similar. This is, okay, this is just a newsfeed ad. There's nothing different there. 
there's nothing different here is with the instant article what i see even i have to okay from the way it's looking right now it doesn't uh, look any different to what the news feed ads are there on to facebook okay i probably i might have to also uh, see the difference between these two but uh, from the pictorial representation it's very much the same kind of ads which we create through the news feed and the procedure is absolutely same because you do get that when you're there when when you're there on the, okay so anand says i want to monetize my ads on app i have an idea for an app but do but do not know it is uh, how it is done can you please tell okay it's so ad mob on the anand the answer to that is so once you get the app being created you have to get you have to sign up with ad mob all right as a publisher and then only uh, you are able to do it so uh, sandeep the answer to your question i have answered it halfway through i haven't uh, really answered in full because even i am not sure about the difference between the minute little difference between these two i might also have to educate myself to be very honest on the difference between instant article and the news feed ads right so uh, probably i might look into it and uh, you can touch base with me on uh, linkedin i can let you know once i am also through with the information the difference between the two all right okay i'm moving further and okay so talking about the challenge which uh, the app uh, marketers basically have now i'm not going to talk about the app a uh, promotion if you are a publisher absolutely sure sure sandeep uh okay whether you are a publisher or a marketer the objective is to definitely drive say, uh, drive more visits drive more installs for your app but how does that really take place you cannot just go ahead and tell people in your network that you have got a mobile app and ask them to download it i mean you uh, it has to have the same set of marketing uh, uh you know tools which we get uh, for websites also and there are there are ways to promote across mobile apps you must have seen uh, within google adwords if you guys are users of google adwords you are using it for the promotion of your business uh, you do get an option of uh, promoting across your mobile apps also let me just go ahead and show it to you if you guys have experienced or seen that that you can create across separate set of ads only to promote across your uh what do you say what do you say the mobile apps let me just log into one of the adwords account show that all right so i'm just creating across a new uh i just clicked on to new campaign and you can see at the campaign level itself it says drive app installs across google network okay now google has its own network on own set of different uh websites and so forth and apps where your app can be promoted across so uh within this you do get across a lot of different uh you know options to promote across now as you can see uh the way you get started over here to uh, you know provide inputs is uh by mentioning across first of all the platform the app platform where your app has been published whether it's on the google play store which is the android or the apple app store which is the ios right you go ahead and first of all select the app platform and then you go ahead and type in the name first it will recognize that yes it's been listed there and so forth and then you move further now that process again of putting in across and listing in across your app getting your app created is a different ball game altogether that's more of the development in the designing part where i 
I already mentioned either you go ahead and uh, take service from all these app uh, providing sites where which which you know charge you on per month basis that's one good thing or if you are looking at a greater app a bigger app then you can always uh, hire across any specific good uh, app developer okay so from the promotion point of view the uh, uh, challenge is the bigger challenge is to go ahead and stand out your app in the entire pool so there are million of millions of apps in this app store okay they're growing every day every single hour every single second there's several uh, hundreds or thousands of apps which are getting launched there's a lot of competition how do you really go ahead and uh, get your apps uh, you know identified is is through differentiation is through something different which you're going to be providing across now what are the keys to app marketing success it has to be the first of all the product quality creating a, a strong app without any bugs you know there has to be a lot of check a lot of thorough quality checks which needs to be done by the app developers and the quality checkers from the uh, point of view of development there there shouldn't be any app crashes uh, and so forth which uh, one has to look for the app should be uh, should, should should enable the customers to uh, do whatever is uh, you know they're designated to so if you have created an app which uh, which is a gaming app make sure the overall experience is good and it doesn't crashes down or it uh, it doesn't happen that the server is heavily loaded and so forth so from the technical point of view you have to make sure things are in place perfectly then only the app the first foundation of your uh, app business or your app uh, platform really uh, moves further okay once this is strong you have a better quality product you have a better quality app then you go ahead and create a buzz or right, you stimulate decision and brand buzz among uh, influencers in the target customer community among app reviewers tech bloggers who focus on new app releases so creating a cross buzz in the app space is very similar to the way we do it in the web version also in web what exactly we do is we take uh, help of the paid media and also the uh, you know the uh, people who are in the space of promoting across reviewing across certain products so like you know in the food industry you got food bloggers in the travel industry you got tra you got travel bloggers in the tech industry you got travel bloggers or the video bloggers v bloggers basically we call them so you go ahead and go ahead and uh, connect with them you hire them you give them your product and you request them to uh, share their uh, you know share your products reviews on their network so that a buzz gets created similarly it happens across in this uh, field in this arena altogether there is no difference as such uh, the buzz can the buzz has to be created across with the help of all of the same set of rules same set of tools uh, it's just the it's just that the the people are different the for the web you have different set of bloggers for apps you have different set of bloggers and the reviews okay so once you have these two things in place the product quality is better the buzz is being created what's next okay after the buzz has been created you have to have better visibility even on the app stores the two of the most or the renowned app stores are definitely the google play store and the apple store uh, and uh, the way you go ahead and promote across on both the app stores uh, your app are very very fairly similar all right which is uh, in other words called the app store optimization okay so you have to use app store optimizations best practices to easily found now this is some this is a topic which i'm which we're going to be focusing more further once we are done with this all right i already spoken about after step 3 it's about uh, creating an initial burst this is very similar to creating burst the only difference is that over here in the initial burst i am talking more about the various different other modes of marketing in the buzz section i just spoke about having app reviews and tech bloggers and or the other bloggers uh, to be focused upon in the fourth point i am focusing more over here about creating brand awareness or the buzz or the initial burst with the help of email marketing with the help of text uh, through even website promotion so uh, while you're promoting your website also you can go ahead and talk about your app 
also through the paid ads the one thing which i did showcase right now through google adwords you do have the ability to create across these mobile ads these mobile app ads basically right so uh, this goes hand in hand guys once you are doing app store optimization and also you are uh, put, put punching in money you are uh, you know you are adding on money in your marketing budget for promoting your app what is happening uh, they are pushing each other so app store optimization leads to better performance of your paid ads and better performance of your paid ads ultimately leads to uh, better performance of your app store also so you know many people ask me this this is a very common question that is uh, seo uh, better than uh, the paid ads or uh, which is the ppc ads or the ppc ads are better than seo uh, so the answer is that they both have a different uh, they both have a different objective to be met okay uh, from a different objective in the sense that if you're looking at the organic space it's seo if you're looking at promoting in the paid space then it's ppc so the difference is here now the other question which i you know receive uh, which i get from uh, various people various different marketers is that uh, if we have to choose one which one should be so again the answer to that lies and depends upon the situation which your business is so uh, and what you're really looking at if you're looking at quick you do not have time and you're looking at quick results then definitely start with the paid forget about seo at this point of time and if you have time and you don't want to spend money then seo is the best thing so start with seo it's a weight game it's a, it's a patience game and then move further but if you have uh, the luxury for both uh, i mean that is the best situation because ultimately uh, they are going to go hand in hand when you're doing both of them together your app store op your optimization will happen soon and also your paid marketing will give you better results with lesser price so the economies of scale also works uh, better when you create when you use both of them together all right keys to app marketing uh, success continued further you should encourage the next thing is to encourage your users to share that across on their social networks again like you can uh, create certain contest or you can uh, use affiliate networks i believe some of you would be knowing about it so you can use across affiliate networks where you can ask uh, certain marketers affiliates to promote your app and you tell them that if there are going to be sign ups or installs of your app through them then there is a certain set of reward or whether it's monetary reward or whether it's some other reward which they're going to get so you can uh you you do need to make sure that uh, sharing is being encouraged and uh, also along with encouraging the sharing encourage uh, getting the reviews from your existing uh, uh you know users and customers and so forth better reviews you must have seen on uh, app store one thing which is prominent the two three things which are prominent which are seen the most either it's the app icon which you get to see or the the app description description about the app and then the other thing which you really look about the app is the reviews the reviews plays a very vital role in terms of uh, the the success of an app if there are good feedbacks and good uh, reviews it will always go in the upper uh, way and if there are uh, you know bad reviews negative reviews definitely the uh, app installs will go down people might not find it a uh, uh, you know a valuable affair to spend time on your app plus even the app stores won't uh, give it a push so they all are interrelated to each other they means will we be getting the complete recording absolutely yes he means yes all right is it getting uh, okay it's 130 right now okay the other thing is to track and measure Just make sure you're using analytics and tracking to continually optimize ad spend track in app purchases and identify the highest value users right uh, it goes without saying the app the uh, the most renowned analytics platform again is uh, google analytics so google analytics has this different version where you can connect not just your website but also your mobile app let me just go ahead and show you all right so i'm just logging into analytics google analytics oh, 
second. Give me a second. All right, so I'm trading across a new account here. And this is what I want to show you. This is what I wanted to show you. So you do get across two options here, guys. If you're looking at uh, analyzing and tracking your website, you choose this. If you're looking at analyzing your mobile app, mobile app, you have a different section over here. So the way I had shown you for AdWords that you get a different section on AdWords, right? You get a different section on analytics too. My, uh, it might be that quite a many of you are aware of it, but it's my job and responsibility to make sure to show you whatever it's possible, okay? So tracking and measurement is absolutely important in making sure that uh, you have certain goals and objectives being laid upon for your marketing team and uh, making sure that things are being, uh, you know, done, the activities are being done, keeping an eye on the goal and objective and performance gets improved over a period of time. And the other thing talking about for the marketing success, for the app marketing success is to cross promote it through the other channels. So whether it's through social media, email marketing, so forth, that goes without saying there's uh, no rocket science here. Now we have divided, you know, if we talk about the marketing plan for an app, uh, the two sort of marketing plans, which should be created across by the marketing team, the two marketing plans, I need to say, uh, one marketing plan for the phase one, which is uh, before the launch, and the other marketing plan, which is after the launch, so the pre-launch and the post-launch. That is something uh, which needs to be done across. Talking about the pre-launch, before you are going to launch across your app, what exactly needs to be done, which is uh, things which needs to be done is to build in the bus before you're launching. Uh, you can do it again with the help of those bloggers, reviewers, asking them to, giving them incentives, giving them uh, sort of freebies and rewards to uh, motivate them so that they go ahead and share their reviews, positive reviews on their, uh, you know, renowned blogs and so forth, or maybe their video blogs, okay? Look out for journalists and so forth, build relationship with them and, uh, Get, get a better understanding of uh, what your end call audience is looking for and create news around that. Also, you can build this, uh, you know, reviews and so forth. You can promote it during the pre-launch phase by seeking in support from your existing customers. So your existing customers, what I mean to say, let's say you already have the web version of your business and you have customers already in place. So you can push them. You have loyal customers. You can uh, incentivize them to go ahead and promote your apps by offering them whatever the, you know, motivates them. Talking about the app store optimization, uh, you, which should really get started before the launch. Now, many people think that this should be done once the app is being launched, then the optimization gets, uh, should get done. Or many people think that uh, the, even in the website space, the websites should be promoted across when, uh, you know, they are being launched. So you can do all the PR, the pub, the, you know, the re relationship building part in the world. Uh, but along with that, start with the app store optimization. If nobody is able to find you, how are they going to download it across? All right. So app store optimization differs a bit. Most of the things are similar, but they differ a bit from uh, Apple play store to the Google play store. All right. It requires the same element as the optimization for websites, which starts with the keyword analysis and the competitor analysis. And uh, you have to look in for those keywords, submit those keywords and those uh, tags and so forth. Over here, you have the headlines and so forth. A keyword rich and conversion optimized app store description is the most important thing. The description of an app with keywords and built in it uh, really makes a great impact. And also make sure for whichever set of uh, region you are creating the app, you're using that particular language. The reviews, ratings play a very vital role, which I've already mentioned. And also the app icon, which has to be catchy enough to really, uh, you know, it has to be an attractive enough and catchy enough so that uh, 
it, it doesn't really uh, gets uh, lost in the crowd, lost in the crowd in the sense with the other apps, it has to stand out. So high and also the description of the app has to be coupled up. The description of the app has to be coupled up with the high quality screenshots, the, the, the videos which you're going to have. I mean, you do get across an opportunity to put across introductory video of your app also. All right. And the other thing is to encourage the reviews and ratings, which I already spoke about and push notifications. Okay. So in the pre uh, launch stage, you can also go ahead and use across the paid marketing. There are several advertising channels, which are being used. So Google AdWords is one of them, but you can promote across apps through Facebook, through different uh, other uh, media channels like iAd, Inmobi, AdMob, uh, you know, TabJoy, JumpTab, a certain real-time bidding exchange. I'm not getting into the details of this. This is a different mechanism altogether. So uh, it's just that they all have different ways of uh, the, the different uh, features and functionalities they have got uh, when it comes down to uh, you know targeting across targeting across your ads. Okay. Then there are different ad types which we've already spoken about, like the expanded banner ads, interstitial, rich media, mobile banner ads, and so forth. All right. So in order to get to the top of a category, get maximum downloads in minimum time, all of these needs uh, needs to be done. We're in the pre-launch stage. You can go with the burst marketing campaign, get better ranking, increase the organic downloads. Cross-channel promotion also uh, should be considered in the pre-launch stage. Uh, so as you can see, even using Skype is one of the mode being shown over here when it comes down to promoting your app. You can use various different other websites, LinkedIn, social platforms, and so forth. All right. Referral marketing, which is the affiliate marketing I already mentioned, you can incentivize other people to, uh, you know, get across much more installs and much more reviews. All right. So that incentivization. Many mark, uh, marketing agencies uh, and so forth, uh, when it comes down to providing mobile app marketing services, they offer such kind of stuff. They help in building strategy, uh, getting ad creative being built so in promoting across different channels through uh, doing the public relations of it, managing the ad, doing the app store optimization and promoting it through social media. So all of these things uh, shall be done in the pre-launch stage too, has to be followed during the post launch also, but should be, should be done in the beginning itself. All right, so uh, whatever I've spoken so far, this is just a repeat of the same. I mean, this is just a repetition of the same stuff. I'm just gonna be quick in terms of this. The nine things which you need to do before you launch an app. First is to uh, list down all the different apps, all right, which are there in your domain. So you have to know your app and how do you know that? By creating, first of all, a list of all the various different apps which are there in the same uh, industry. Check out how they are. So you have to really uh, judge, you have to really observe and get knowledge about what is it that these apps are doing in order to, in order to get across uh, profits and what is it that really make them successful. So if you're studying the successful ones, you have to evaluate the things which are working for them. Probably they might work, some of them might work for you also. I'm not saying every thing would work, some of them. Uh, when you're launching the app, it you know, has to go along with, uh, I mean, uh, the name of the app has to uh, be chosen in a manner that it creates, uh, you know, it strikes into the mind of your end customers. It shouldn't be something you know, which is, again, getting lost in the crowd. Something which is memorable. You can include some of the most important keywords, uh, but the, I would suggest these keywords should not be used in the name of the app. They should be used more in terms of... Uh, in the product description, okay? And make sure that you're not infringing any trademarks and so forth. Third point, I've already mentioned that, finding your competitors and see uh, what they have done, what their developers have done, the goods and the bads and so forth. When you, are, when you have created the app or when you are almost done with it, you, know, you have to, you know, you would have to list it across on the app stores. And when you're doing it across, you're submitting it, the category has to be mentioned. Make sure you look into the categories of the other apps and uh, on the basis of uh, the category, the success of the, camp, the, success of the app uh, gets also decided. 
you have to see the number of downloads uh, you might have to really need in order to rank in a certain category. A category which is very competitive probably might involve a lot of hard work. So you have to strike a balance. You have to see which uh, category is gelling well with your app and it has a fair amount of balanced competition. Or you have to calculate your strength. The more competitive a category, the more downloads you're going to get. All right, the app icon being the fifth stuff, which is the most important. So this is the design element. Your icon matters a lot. Make it amazing, eye-catching, and deliver the style and the purpose, right? Whatever you're looking at. Then comes in the high uh, definition screenshots, which I already mentioned. So screenshots of the apps, uh, you know, app design, the app screens basically, right? That needs to be taken. And the demo video. So the video which is going to be defining for us what your app is going to be all about. Make them memorable, informative, and exciting. Convince the users to download or buy from your app or buy the app and so forth. The eighth part, the eighth point being the landing page. So when you're promoting across your app, uh, you're creating advertisements, these paid ads, and these paid ads always uh, will lead to a landing page. After clicking on the ad, the customer the, uh, goes on to a landing page, which also needs to be a good looking, uh, better informative landing page. Make sure that it's also being optimized for the search engines by putting it, putting in right set of keywords uh, in the title tag, in the description, in the text and so forth, right? Make sure you're defining, you're, you're talking about your app uh, features in a perfect manner, along with the same screenshots of your app and also the demo video and so forth. And the pre-release buzz we have already spoken about, you can make sure, you need to make sure that you're taking care from all those bloggers, from all the press release sites, if you're launching across your app. All right, so that was about the pre-launch. Now we're gonna just focus off about the after launch. Once we have launched the app, just give me a second. Oh, excuse me. After the launch, uh, what is it that you need to? So, I mean, things are not very different over here. They're very much the same. Uh, it's just that you have to continue to pre-launch stuff. Absolutely, again, in the post-launch, it's just the intensity would vary uh, depending upon the situation. I cannot say that you have to really lower down on one certain set of activities. There's no rule of thumb. Again, uh, as per the situation, things would really matter. After the launch, you can go ahead and uh, push across for a campaign where you can offer free trials in the beginning so that people are encouraged to use your app and, uh, and so forth. But uh, for, a, for a business which is uh, purely into, I would say, let's say luxury stuff or um, you, you cannot afford to give free, free stuff. So again, differs from business to business, but this is just one sort of stuff which goes, uh, applies to most of the businesses, right? Offering across a free trial for your app or something. You need to sign up for your analytics, which I've already shown you to you. The Google Analytics is one of the most uh, renowned one. You can go with the other analytics platform too, but uh, the most widely used one is Google Analytics. Reach out to the top, to the top media, right? Uh, using across again, your same network of journalists or bloggers and so forth, making sure the press releases are going in place after the launch also, so that <clears throat> both the things are being promoted. During the pre-launch, you're telling them about the app getting launched on such and such stuff on such and such date. And once it's been launched, then also making an announcement about it. All right. Uh, you have to encourage the users. You have to provide them incentives. Again, the same. Uh, you have to encourage them to pro promote it over their social media networks and so forth. Again, you can use affiliate networks also for the for the same. And then the paid promotion part. Already spoken about it. So whatever you were using earlier uh, channels, you would have learnings from there, which you can apply in the post-launch stage too. Making sure that uh, you are, uh, you know, you're. you're giving it a right direction with the right set of creatives, with the right set of messaging. All right, so that's about uh, the marketing plan for your apps in terms of, uh, okay, I think there, is there any chance? No, okay. 
So the next thing guys, which we're going to be looking at is the app store optimization. I have a different deck for that same. All right. So the next thing is guys, app store optimization. Is there any questions uh, which you guys have got? Let me know so that I can go ahead and answer that. If not, then uh, again, we can take that same 10 minutes break. And then the last session is going to be about the app store optimization, which we'll focus on. Sure, Anand, uh, I'll make sure that you get across the recording. I'll uh, uh, get that done for sure. Right. All right, so uh, what we'll do, we'll again go for a, uh, a 10 minutes break and then we'll uh, jump onto the last session for this training, which is going to be focusing across on the App Store optimization. And uh, any questions uh, you guys have got, I'll be more than happy to, uh, you know, uh, answer them and so forth. Uh, let me know, guys. Okay, so I'm just going to be on mute for another 10 minutes and then we'll, we'll catch up in 10 minutes, guys. Make sense? Let me know, please, on the chat window. All right, perfect. Thanks, Elle. Thanks, Sanjeev. So I'm just going to mute myself. In 10 minutes, we'll connect again. Thanks.
All right, so let's get started after the break, guys. Uh, just wanted to check if you guys are able to hear me. Please do let me know in the chat window. Perfect, thanks, Anand. <clears throat> Thank you, Nikesh and Rajesh. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so now we're gonna be focusing across in the last uh, session for today uh, on App Store optimization. Uh, we have been speaking about it in the second session about things like, you know, using the, I mean, making sure that the, I'm sorry, somebody is on unmute mode. I, I just have to make sure, okay. All right, now it's perfect. So we, we spoke about things like uh, having a great app icon. We spoke about in, you know, embedding in keywords, first of all, finding in keywords, and then embedding in keywords in the product description. Then we spoke about having things like uh, videos, high definition screenshots, a demo video talking about what the app is and so forth. All right, so let's move further. And now to begin with, first of all, in this slide, I've just spoken about what exactly we mean by App Store. We all know what App Store is, so I don't need to really put in across a lot of uh, emphasis on that. We know that this is the place where we can really get across whatever apps uh, are available. I mean, this is a sort of a place where uh, all the apps are being, you know, added in by the app developers, right? The most uh, renowned app stores are the iOS and the Google Play, but there are others like you've got Amazon App Store, Windows, and the BlackBerry and so forth, all right? Uh, but you, as you saw with Google AdWords, there were just only two options when it comes down to promotion of the apps. The two options, as in the two options for the app stores, only the Google and the Apple. You'll find it on all the major networks, only these two app stores, all right? Certain uh, numbers are being mentioned right here in this slide uh, in terms of apps which are published on various platforms. On an average, 2,371, 2,371 new apps are published every day. In terms of the share, if we talk about 47% on Android, which is the Google Play, and then 41% on iOS and 12% on Windows Mobile. Uh, there's no doubt Android leads the way, the Google Play Store. Uh, you know, whosoever creates across an app, first of all, things of listing it with the Google Play Store most of the time. So I mean, and then the second preference is to go with the iOS and so forth. There are 19 new uh, developers published, you know, 19 new developers publish an app on iOS each day versus 75 on Okay, there's some contradiction number or over here, but the major apps are there actually on the Android. So it's easy for your app to get lost into the competition. We spoke about that. You have to make sure that your app doesn't get lost uh, by having great, again, good looking uh, app icon and those high definition uh, screenshots and videos and so forth with keywords being embedded into the product description. What exactly we mean by App Store optimization? It is an alternative uh, to like, uh, it is very similar to what search engine optimization we talk about. When we talk about search engine optimization, it's all about getting your website in the uh, upper listings of the search results. Similarly, App Store optimization is a process of getting your apps listed in the upper listing, in the topmost listing, uh, the organic ones in the app results. Whosoever goes on to an app store and puts in across a certain word or, uh, or, or a phrase and so forth, uh, just because he or she is looking for, right, just because he or she is looking for some app related to that, they happen to get across a list of apps. Now they are being ranked in a, in a certain manner. What is that process which these stores really carry out uh, you know, for giving across the ranking. That process is uh, basically related to the app store optimization activities that the marketers do. So we as marketers, whatever we do from the perspective of optimization are in sync with what the app stores are really looking at while giving across the ranking to the apps. Okay. So uh, it is about getting the, first of all, keywords right finding out the keywords right for your apps and then making sure your app gets ranked for those keywords. All right, it is the process of improving the visibility of a mobile app. I'm just gonna read out what's being written over here. 
such as on an iPhone, iPad, Android, or Windows app, in an app store such as iTunes or Google Play for Android. It is closely related to search engine optimization, like I already mentioned. Specifically, app store optimization includes the process of ranking highly in an app store search results and top chart rankings. That's what Wikipedia has to say. All right. Now, why app store search matters? There are certain more numbers which are being given here. Okay. In the cases, I've already published my app on Play Store, but similar apps on Play Store are spam apps and are irrelevant to the idea of my app. What should I do? Okay. You have to alter your uh, tags, basically, maybe. Uh, because what the app store might have found, uh, the content in your pro app description is uh, similar to what the other similar apps content, uh, app description is. So try altering, uh, Nikesh, in this scenario, the app store description and the headline, or maybe try out with a different category, a similar uh, category to what you have chosen right now. That is something which will help you in uh, getting that difference. Your similar apps would definitely change the moment you want to change across these two, three things. The, the title, basically, what is uh, the description of the app and also the category which you have chosen. That is the only way. Content rating absolutely matters. Absolutely. Big time. Big time. Yeah. Right. Make sure you uh, encourage your... Uh, you know, users, maybe people in your network to go ahead and give you better reviews. And in the reviews also, whatever you want your app to be known about, right, for whatever keywords or, uh, you know, something which is not related to those spam apps, make sure those words are not being used. Maybe these spam apps which you're talking about are using the same lingo, same words, uh, to which may, might have been used right now. Could be a scenario, could be a scenario. I'm not too sure. I haven't seen your app and I haven't seen those similar apps. But uh, without seeing it, the only suggestion which I can give you is to play around with that. That's the only thing which you have in place, which you already, which you only have in your, in your hands. There's no other way to really get that changed. All right, so that's what I would say. Uh, hope that helps, let me know, Nikesh. Now, uh, yeah, I was talking about certain my pleasure. Okay. Now, I was talking about certain numbers which are uh, being given in here. How do people really find out apps? What are the app discovery methods? Over 2 million mobile apps in the major app stores. You know, there are over 2 million uh, uh, apps in the major app stores. And your app is discovered, uh, you know, is the, uh, how your app gets discovered is one of the biggest issues. More apps are discovered through search than any other method. As you can see, 63% it's been shown over here for iOS, that general browsing in an app store, 63% people find apps through the general browsing only. All right. Uh, then 50% by speaking to their friends and families. Then there is uh, the top rated browsing. People look at the ratings. And applications are already sometimes by default installed on social networking website, people do get to know about it. Uh, general browsing on the internet, you know, you get to see the paid ads of apps. Searching via an internet search engine also, or seeing an ad in a magazine, newspaper, by reading blogs. So these are the numbers. This is a bit old data, 2012 data, but still it gives you, uh, you know, it gives us an understanding that it's majorly, if you have to get across your app successful, definitely all those things have to be taken care of, which we've already spoken about, uh, that, you know, knowing your competitors and so forth and knowing why they are uh, really doing well and so forth, but uh, getting a good grip on the uh, app store optimization is the most prominent, is the most important thing when it comes down to marketing your app. You know, uh, major uh, revenue, uh, which a mobile app gets through a marketing is this marketing uh, channel basically, the App Store optimization. All right, uh, now for an average app, if we talk about search actually makes up the vast majority of installs and 12% of the daily active users, which is called DAU, search for apps daily, 50% of the DAU search for apps weekly, and Google sees 6 million unique phrases searched monthly in Google Play Store. Now again, there are, these are certain numbers, okay? This is actually given by uh, Google itself. Now, why App Store search matters? 
the higher our app ranks in an app store search results, the more visible it is to the potential customers, right? And that's what we always look for. That traffic, that, that increased visibility tends to translate into more traffic to your app state, apps page in the app store. The goal of an app store optimization is basically to drive more traffic to your apps page in the app store so that searches can take a specific option, which could be like downloading your app and so forth. Okay, now here are certain things uh, which we have to really look in when we are going ahead and uh, doing the optimization. One is the meta, so the, the most important one is the metadata, which includes things like the title of the app, description of the app, the app icon, the app screenshot, the category which has been chosen, the keywords, the Google Play only, right? The app type or the demo video and so forth. One has to make sure that all of them are actually kept uh, in, um, you know, are, are looked in with utmost importance. Whatever title you're using defines what your app is, um, making sure that the keywords are being used across in the title and the description. The icon has to be catchy, screenshots needs to be high definition, category is appropriate, and so forth. The other factors than these, which plays a very vital role when it comes down to app store optimization is the reviews, ratings, and how many downloads. More the number of downloads, better optimization really becomes. So they all go hand in hand. One thing leads to another, so right? Talking about all of these things one by one, starting from app title, uh, you know, we know that branding is the key. So make sure you include the keyword in your title if it's, if it's possible. Don't be so pushy about including a, a keyword in your title. If it's making sense, then definitely go ahead and do that. Otherwise, uh, leave it the way uh, it sounds good, okay? Just don't, uh, uh, just don't go ahead with uh, including keyword even if it's not making sense. It has to make sense for sure, all right? If it's making sense, it's looking good, uh, uh, it's gelling well, then definitely make sure keyword is uh, put in the title. Based on the top 25, uh, Top 25 ranking position, you know, it was being calculated that an app which does include keyword in its title is ranked 10.3% higher than the ones that do not have keywords. Now, this is the this is a uh, study being done, and the source is by Mobile Dev uh, HQ. They they did that and they found that found this. Uh, now, almost 50% of apps now contain some sort of keyword in their title. Bigger brands to optimize their title, like. Gmail has got email from Google, Skype uh, has got title like free instant messenger and video calls. App name in the Apple App Store can be up to 255 characters long, but the user can see only up to 35 characters in their iPhone. So make sure the first 35 characters uh, stand apart and giving across the best understanding of what the app is all about because only the 35 are being visible. Right, the rest ones I'm not saying don't pay attention to it. You need to, but 35 plays bigger, uh, major, makes way major impact. So make sure you put a lot of emphasis on that. For the Android, the maximum character for an app title is just 30. All right, so you have to give in your best in those lesser number of words. All right, this is another example. Like for a World Card Mobile Business Card Reader and Business Card Scanner, that's the title. And as you can see, Business Card Reader business card scanner, these are two keywords. The name of the app is being given here, followed by, so there's hyphen and then followed by the two keywords, which defines, all right? And then there is description, there's this app icon, all of those things are there. All right, talking further about app description, the intro lines are what's shown to users before they click, more to expand the description at the code. So you show your best writing skills in the initial paragraph with marketing appeal, your unique selling proposition, your USP statement. Your app is ideal for declaration. Uh, what exactly your app is talking about. A short snippet from the app review from popular site can also make a lot of sense. So if you have got a good uh, you know, review sites who have given you given a cross review for your app, uh, you go ahead and include that. That puts in a lot of uh, weightage, uh, you know, in the eyes in the eyes of those who are looking at, uh, you know, installing a cross app. They they find it useful. You know, it's building in credibility. You are using someone else's credibility to build in your credibility. Uh, it's it's like that. 
what are the reasons to download uh, you have to give uh, uh, you know under you have to give uh, pointers in terms of why should someone really care about installing your app what is it for them what exactly is it for them why should they really go ahead and install that that needs to be put in across and then you can also mention the number of downloads uh, which has happened also the other apps if you have created uh, you are in let's say uh, you've created five more different apps why don't you go ahead and just put that across if you already have an app which is working really well again you are hopping on the credibility which you have played earlier and using it for a newer app okay there is a 4000 character limit on descriptions for both the apple app store and the google play store it's important to localize a description for the important territories okay this is an example number 1 for app description so camera uh, app camera plus it's, this is talking in uh, in terms of uh, the functionalities uh, what exactly it has to give, and it's also talking about Wall, what, what Wall Street Journal has to say, what Time Magazine has to say, and what other different people have said about this particular app, the reviews which they have given across. All right. Okay. Now this is these are there's another description from a different app which is talking about the features. It's talking about also uh, what other people have to say about this app. App icon. So your product icon can make or break your success. Make sure your icon or your logo clearly, uh, or logo clearly and uh, creatively expresses what your app is all about. Do not use, uh, do not include words. Uh, don't stand out the glass. Simple is absolutely good. Simple is clear. Stand out from the crowd and make sure it's consistent with the other uh, stuff which you've got. All right. For business apps, keep the icon consistent with the rest of your business logo, colors, and apps. So make sure that you're using the same font, same style, same logo. There's no difference in that. For games, make sure your icon reflects a key element of your game. It's also helpful if the icon conveys the gameplay to let users know if they'll be interested in it or not. All right, that's about the icon. Here are certain examples. For a pizza shop, it's like this. The pizza has been uh, shown across, and then you've got for the travel plan app, you, you've got this uh, briefcase and so forth being showcased here with all these things, uh, you know, what, which you put in a crossword in that, your passport, your camera, and stuff, the luggage bag. All right, next talking about the screenshot. Uh, like already mentioned, screenshot gives a pictorial representation of how your uh, other things within the app are gonna look like, the design element basically, right? It displays some eye-catching screenshot of your app in action. It gives clear and detailed screenshots of your app and highlight all the best parts of your app within multiple screenshots. The app store always allows you to upload five screenshots of your app. Be sure to use every single one, right? I mean, if it's giving you five, why not use all the five? Why do they just go ahead with two or three? That's it, right? Go with all of them. You can add some simple text or additional graphics to your screenshots to drive home the benefit of your app. Here is some example. This is how Pizza Hut is done. So they've got the screenshots on how people can go ahead and uh, you know choose in uh, whatever they want to order and so forth. All right. This is for a card reader app, right? The screenshots are there. So it doesn't just show the app screenshot. It's showcasing how from a mobile phone you can uh, use it across. So the, it it really differs from app to app the kind of screenshots you're gonna be putting it across. This for the car racing app, all right? These are some good ones which I've shown you right over there. Talking about the app keywords, the keyword field in an iOS is a 100 character field which you can use, just a second. Yeah, yeah which you can use to tell iTunes, uh, right? Search for which keywords you should show up. You should focus on relevancy, the search volume, and the difficulty. I believe you guys are aware of the search volume and so forth. That's a different ball game altogether, how to really get the keyword analysis done. It's, it's a long process. Uh, you know, when you do the keyword analysis, you look at various different things. What's the competition? What's the search volume? So which is in, in other language, the search, the supply and the demand. You go always for those keywords which have a higher demand and lesser supply, right? So, you know, the competition becomes less. You have more chances to be on top and uh, when you have more chances to be on top for a keyword which is in demand, your 
chances to get across better conversions rises always at a lesser price at a lesser uh, price or cost whatever you say or a lesser effort in other words don't use multiple word phrases all right break out individual words and do not repeat words that are already in your title so it will be like spamming don't go with keyword stuffing or keyword spamming it should not sound like as if you're just writing for the purpose of optimizing it and just to optimize it you're being way too pushy you're just putting in embedding in keywords and you're not keeping an eye on what whether it makes sense or not whether that sentence which you have put in is of any uh, has got any meaning to it or not make sure there is a clear meaning clear value being delivered from that description with uh, you know with uh, with keywords being put in across in a smart fashion all right there are certain tools which we i'm going to talk about for the c keyword uh, you know analysis and so forth like we have google keyword planner tool and so forth in google play the app description has to be optimized which we have already spoken about there are certain keyword tools guys keyword planner you guys must be already aware about that there is mobile dev hq with brainstorming search man sensor tower so they all give you information about which keywords have got uh, how much searches how much uh you know competition and so forth on the basis of those numbers you come up with a conclusion on what keywords to choose you cannot go with n number of keywords right i hope you would agree to this keyword planner uh what do you do is you sign up and you then use on google adwords and use go to the tools section you go to the tools section and use a keyword planner this gives you an understanding of the average monthly searches which i already mentioned and also the competition all right similarly there are other tools like search man right this gives you a better understanding of uh, keywords which you use for your uh, app store optimization so these are some snapshots which i have taken from these tools and i have put in across over here so the keyword which was being put in across here was car racing after putting across here uh, it it's mentioned right over here that uh, which one you should go for and uh, which are the other competitors which are there in this category okay then there is the sensor tower all right that also helps you in marketing across your apps they have their own network and they also help you to do keyword analysis okay so you can track an app of uh, any of your competitors too all right an iphone or an ipad or an android app so these are some other keyword suggestions so these are keyword suggestions being given across in the left hand side bar menu and uh, it does also mention the traffic level the i on for iphone ipad uh, and so forth okay. so google play uh, the google so google categorizes apps into apps into two main types they are applications and games so you have to mark your app appropriately whether it's an app or a game the youtube uh, demo video you need to upload it across on youtube that highlights the best parts of your app so, and uh, also uh you can leverage across google plus all apps have a google plus plugin you know the more pluses your app gets the more visibility it will be in the play store so it's more of like a review which you get across but this is specifically for google the google play store all right then other thing is the app reviews and ratings which i've already spoken about the more ratings the better ratings the positive ratings always help you to get across uh good performance in the app store optimization the more favorable reviews your app receives the higher the conversion rate all right these are certain uh, uh, examples of reviews and so forth the customers are giving across reviews uh, with long detailed information about what they felt were, how was their experience and so forth make sure your app has a sufficient amount of you know detailed and genuine reviews that that always adds a lot to the entire ball game of app store optimization all right so rating also uh, are also a direct reflection of your app's performance people will almost or will almost always download an app that has a higher percentage of positive rating already spoken about it any questions you got feel free to put that across guys and in the end uh, would concluded by saying that in order to reap the rewards of app store optimization you have to invest in time and effort uh, from all the angles you will have to be consistent uh, and make sure that you're using all the channels uh, do the cross channel promotion uh, and uh, 
also all those things which we have spoken about needs to be punched in put in across in a balanced manner to drive traffic app store optimization is a useful set uh, is a useful set of techniques that is used to you know increase the discoverability through keywords through screenshots through demo videos and so forth is just uh, one of the many approaches to attract the attention in a whole set of crowded app store right so having a great app doesn't really solve the purpose it's just that you have to also be in the first place all right these are the sources from where i have taken across some of the data and so forth guys these were the websites these are the sources and that's all from my side with regards to the mobile marketing uh, training for today let me know guys if you got any questions uh, would be more than happy to answer them uh gaurav are you around let me know Yep. Hi, Nick. All right. Perfect. Thanks, Carl. Cool. So, so we'll just like kind of pause, take a pause for a minute. You know, guys, if you have any questions, any follow-up questions for Nick, uh, please feel free to put them in the chat box. Okay. Cool. Thank well, you, sir. Uh, thanks thanks uh, nick you know and and thanks everyone for you know taking time out to join us today uh, you know i i hope you found this useful uh, you know and and we'll continue to uh, reach out to you with with more varied topics uh, please send us any feedback that you have for any any topics that you would want us to cover going forward next time or you know any feedback that you would like to share you know uh, uh, my my email id is, is on the chat box you know and uh, you know really want to you know thanks uh, thank each and every one of you to take time out and in joining us today and thanks nick for you know arranging this uh, for a great presentation thanks garav and i'll be sharing across the slide the deck with you uh, who okay. sure. will need to share it with everyone sure okay. sure all right thanks everyone have a great day thank you thank you everyone have a great day and a great weekend all right thank you